Hello, my name is Ekaterina, and I would like to talk to you today about handling uncertainty as a product manager. I am a senior product manager in Spotify. I work with a platform behind the integrations that Spotify has with different partners. TVs, gaming consoles, speakers, cars. They all use platform that I work with in order to play what was requested to be played and also then to do finan correct financial reporting. Before Spotify, I was a product manager in credit risk and analytics in a fintech. And before that, I worked in telecom. But today we're going to talk about uncertainty. As human beings, we don't like uncertainty. It makes us feel insecure. We don't know what will happen in future. We don't know how to react to that. And if we look at the opposite, if we know what will happen, we have a feeling of control. We have a feeling that we know what needs to be done in order to achieve the result that we want to achieve. Even in software development, we wish we had an algorithm or decision tree to address something unknown. But as product managers, it's not like that. We face uncertainty on a daily basis. And I think it looks like that. We often need to go through unknown in order to take a decision and then get result and get the feedback loop. And there are many tools that address the journey from the moment you took the decision. Different development methodologies, different uh, uh, ways to test with customers and to get the feedback loop. But then to arrive to the decision, we need to go through a process and handle that uncertainty. It feels overwhelming, but at the same time, I think that's a great opportunity for us because if something is not known, it can be anything. There are many ways to solve that. And until you took that decision, you can explore many avenues and many possibilities. Let's look at different sources of uncertainty. I think there are three large sources of uncertainty that we face as product managers. There might be more, but I think these are the top three. First of all, the changes in the value proposition. Secondly, team dynamics. And thirdly, stakeholders. Let's go through each one of them in its turn. When I think about value proposition, I think more that customer needs might change or the product that you're offering might no longer solve that. Or possibly the customers uh, op uh, open the product that you uh, offered them, but then they never get engaged or the take up is too slow. There are so many things out there in the market that might affect how your product behaves and what, what is the value that it delivers to the customer. And all that can change. So this might lead to unknowns in your work. Also, regulations uh, might change. Let's say G GDPR was introduced in Europe, and then many co uh, companies had to change their priorities and address data retention in their systems. And the last two are also very interesting. The internal strategy might change. If you work in a large company, the company overall might refocus on different customer group. So if before your part of the product was perfectly solving customer needs with a new focus, you might need to rethink how do you fit in the big picture. And also for me, the technical solution is part of the value propositions that we have for the customer. What type of technology was chosen? How much you invested into scaling your systems? How much did you invest into thinking through the capabilities within the systems? All that might affect in the long term what features you deliver to the customer. Let's say if you never resolved some of the technical debt, you might have to stop the development of the new features requested by the customers and just invest into stability of the systems. Because if the service is not working, then the customer don't get the value that you intended them to get. All that, for me, is source of uncertainty as a product manager, and I group that in the value proposition. 
The second source of uncertainty is the team dynamics. And here it's both the product team that you are part of, but also the development team. And as humans, there might be different things that happen in our life. There might be changes in the team composition. A new person has joined. And then the team dynamics has changed. There might be a lack of focus in the team because possibly people are working on too many things at the same time. Or there are external dependencies. If you work in a large company, most likely for major change to happen, you need two or three teams or five or more to be involved. And then those teams need to coordinate how the work will happen. All that might affect the feelings within the team and thus the how the team works through the things that you prioritized for them. And the same goes for the product team. Within the product team, you all work towards on the same problem space and towards the same strategy. And there might be different ambitions or different understanding of the strategy. And then the new person might come in and the same might happen. So all that might change what you plan to happen and instead put you in a situation of uncertainty. The last group is stakeholders. First of all, you need to think, who are they? Do you know who might have requirements on, on your products? Sometimes you don't prioritize certain group of stakeholders. The situation might have changed, and now they have a new set of requirements on your team, on your product. Also, they might be new people coming on board and creating new strategy for their side of the product. And of course, they, their needs are changing and fluctuating all the time. How do you address that? And I think the last one might sound unintuitive if they come with a solution instead of the problem. But I think that's also a, a source of uncertainty because if the stakeholder comes with a solution and you start addressing that, you're not solving the source of the problem and then it might come back. So you need to look more into that. So all that might put you in the situation when the landscape that you thought was known became unknown. Wow, that's lots of uncertainty, right? So what kind of qualities can you develop in yourself in order to address that? First of all, it's curiosity. I think that's a very important uh, quality for product managers because we need to know what's happening in the market, what's happening in the company, what's happening in the teams and across our stakeholders. We also need to show empathy. We need to understand where the people are coming from, why they have certain requirements, why our customers are, have certain needs. Without empathy, the curiosity doesn't give us answers that we want to get. We also need certain sense of flexibility. In the changing environment, we need to adapt. But at the same time, we need to have perseverance in order to achieve the goals and the results that we want to achieve. So you might think, all those qualities are great, but is there anything actionable I can do? Of course, let's look into that. We have already talked about different sources of uncertainty. So next step is to learn to detect the early signs that something that was known might become unknown or that there is a risk of uncertainty. Then break it down and start somewhere. And that will guide you to the decision. Let's look more into details of the early signs. I will just provide a couple of examples because there are multiple examples for each one of the sources of uncertainty. And moreover, it's very individual because it might depend on your type of product or on your type of stakeholders. So let's look at the just few examples. If we look at the value proposition, to me, a strong indicator of the uncertainty is change in metrics. Let's say you suddenly see a decrease in the usage certain part of your product. 
but as well, it can be a sudden increase of the usage. You might wonder why an increase is an uncertainty. That's great, that's what we wanted. However, if the increase is unplanned, your systems might not scale up to the increase that you are getting. Or there might be some bad behavior of the actors that causes that. So any change of the matrix that you haven't planned needs to be looked into and analyzed to give you answers to know what's happening. For the team dynamics, to me, the early signs of uncertainty is a lack of collaboration. If I see that there is a hesitation to share the tasks or to help each other within the team, that uh, rings the alarm to me. And I would invest more time into team collaboration and team dynamics. And the last one for the stakeholders, one of the examples could be a new company bet coming in. That might change the priority on the stakeholder side. And then this way, this might change the priorities that you have on your side. So you need to have an overview of what's happening on the company level uh, in order to see, foresee potential changes on the stakeholder side. So what can you do once you detected the uncertainty? First of all, listen and observe. Gather more information. Talk to the colleagues across the company. Learn about their challenges and priorities. Potentially, there is a space for collaboration or possibly something that they are doing might affect your priorities and your product. Ask questions. Sometimes it's the hardest thing to do when everyone in the room seems like they understand what is meeting about, but you have no clue. Ask the question. Show the courage of showing that not everything is, is as clear as it seems to be. And follow up. If you detected that there is a problem, decided not to act on that, check up on it in a couple of weeks or months. Once you gathered more information, evaluate. Use your critical thinking. Is that relevant or not? You cannot take every single piece of information in and then act on that. You, you will need to prioritize as with everything. So how is the information that you got affecting your team and your product? Is your strategy still relevant? Are you solving the right problem? And is the prioritization right? Maybe something has changed and now you need to reprioritize work for your team. Make the first step. It's very easy to get stuck in the analysis paralysis. What can you do to resolve the uncertainty? Can you create a process? For example, an exploration process. Can you host a design workshop or brainstorming session? Involve other team members. I find that for myself, it's much easier to bounce the ideas with another person, with the engineering manager or my product colleagues. And then some of the things that I couldn't quite figure out, with their knowledge, they can help me and support me. And we can solve the uh, problem together or at least figure out what can be done to get more clarity. Um, start product development process. Maybe you just need to make a prototype and test that to get some uncertainty. Or possibly you need to have a structured ideation coming back to the process creation. All that can help you to make the first step towards certainty or possibly resolve the whole unclarity that you have on your, on your plate. And last but not least is inform. Tell the story. It's not only about getting all the information and digesting it and questioning it, but it's also about telling the story, how does your product fit? What value it delivers to the company, to the customers, to stakeholders? Plan that communication. It's not only ad hoc popping up news, but also what information is missing. How can you provide that information so that people get the clarity about what you do, because then they would know what kind of information they could come to you uh, with and also what information they can share with you. So let's take a couple of examples. We talked about this process of how to handle uncertainty. So if we take an example of stakeholders as a source of uncertainty, 
possibly the priorities have changed on the stakeholder side. And then how can you detect it early on? You can talk to your stakeholders and you, uh, when you collaborate on a certain project, and then you suddenly see that your request is not prioritized. You are asking them for some resources, but they never come around to work on that. Uh, that's a worrisome so uh, sign from my perspective. I think the easiest thing for the first step is just catch up with the stakeholder. Ask them what are the priorities. Ask them what has changed. If you discuss that you need to execute on a certain project, why aren't they working on that project? And that can help you to generate possible solutions and take a decision. There might be different situations. Sometimes stakeholders might not understand the priority of that request. So you need to clarify that based on the information. Maybe you need to provide resources to help them figure it out. Maybe you need to collaborate more. Or possibly you need to join the effort and your team members need to come and do some work for them. All that can be generated as solutions based on the information that you, is provided by the stakeholder and then your analysis of that information. Let's take another example. Very famous technical debt as a source of uncertainty. The early signs to identify that you have a problem is if your team is unsure how certain part of the code will behave. That might be within the discussion about implementing a new feature or just a coffee conversation or virtual coffee conversation these days when they say that they don't really understand that piece of code. So you as a product manager can do a couple of things. You can organize a discussion to break that down and understand what exactly is unclear about that code. And also talk about what value that code delivers. Why? do we need to work on that code right now? Why do we need to solve that uh, problematic code or how can we make it more clear? Based on that discussion, it can generate various solutions that later you can act upon. Whether you need to prioritize focus time to work on that code or you can integrate it into the feature development. So let's recap. Uncertainty is feels very risky and unknown. And we often are unsure how to act on that. So I suggest you to use the following framework. First of all, look at the possible sources of uncertainty. Develop your own system of indicators. What are the early signs that something might become unknown? Start somewhere, develop a process, talk to a colleague, try to figure out what is the first step. And then based on that, you can take a decision and see how to proceed. And then you can gather the results and then feed the feedback and then proceed again. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye.